always hit the car park. Good morning everybody. Sun not quite up yet. As you can see from the intro of this video, there's some ugly scenes going on there. I'm meeting up with, well, probably one of the most up and coming coaches there is. I mean, this is Alex Clapp. He's been on the channel a couple of times before. He was uh, doing a lesson with James Ruth. And if you haven't been and seen that, make sure you check that one out. So James obviously has his lessons here with Alex. We've also had Alex on the channel when we did our Sun uh, Sunningdale vlog. Alex has uh, agreed to, kindly agreed to kind of follow my journey, help me on my journey um, to get me back to playing some what I feel is some better golf. Let's hit some balls, let's get myself warmed up before this session gets going. Well, what a fantastic morning of coaching I've just had there with Alex. If I see shots that I'm happy with, if I see a shape of shot that I know that I can play, then I'll start to build on that confidence. It might not always be the perfect shot that I'm actually seeing, but as long as it goes to roughly where I'm kind of trying to get it to, I'll start to play well. I'll start to sort of believe that I can play better and better. If I start to see the odd shock shot, so a shot where it doesn't go pretty much in that area, I start to lose a little bit of confidence. And you get me on a golf course like Woburn, where I feel like I've possibly lost a bit of confidence, where it's very tight. I start to sort of stop believing in my own abilities, let's say. And that's when my game really starts to drop off. I'm going to explain to you now a little bit more about what's kind of just happened in that lesson um, that hopefully I can grow with and take it forward from there. Setup wise, not a problem at all. Everything's very neutral, very much where I'd expect it. Spine angles are good. You know, balance points are in check. Everything from that standpoint is great, right? Baseline from face on is really good too. For a seven iron, for a draw perspective, you've got shaft lean, you've got ball positions just forward of middle. Yeah. Everything what you set up here is great, okay? The problem happens for me, and then let's call it a problem, but more so you put the handbrake on, right? When you get to here, and that position there is great, okay? Yeah. But very, very limited from there downwards. This is very, very quiet from pelvis down. Handsy finish to the top. Yeah, big turn. Yeah. Very, very minimal shoulder turn. And that's limited because you haven't completed your pelvis turn. It's as simple as that. Okay. You have to complete shoulder turn. You have to complete pelvis turn unless you're an unbelievable athlete, mm. right? Evident even more so from down the line. Takeaway is superb. Yeah. Position to lead arm parallel is superb. But you don't have this freedom of the right side lengthening a little bit, which increases the amount of hand movement, right? Yeah. So then when the hand movement comes in, you can see the right legs maintain so much flex. Yeah. Yeah. Structurally, if you were to just go like that, structurally is superb. Yeah. So I think that side of it that you need to get the realization of is it's actually really, really good. But you need to free yourself up a little bit from the sense of need to feel a little bit more from the lead arm parallel position. Yeah. Like you stretch a bit, like this right side lengthens, like you your right pocket moves up diagonally. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens when it doesn't and it just lifts with zero pelvis, right side pelvis movement during backswing, as you come down, the face is open. Yeah. Right? You see yeah. the lead yeah. wrist is yeah. cut. Yeah. Face is open, face is open, still open, still open, still open. And then you're like, oh, mm. somehow I need to get this now square. Yeah. Right. Which is why you see that happening. Yeah. Big kind of like, oh, yeah. stall, the, stall the pivot, stall the torso. Let's get some hand action in there yeah. to square it, right? So it's all about the face. The face happens, for me, 
because everything stops from here. If you turn from here and got a better coil and a better stretch and a better rotation, yeah. during the way down then, that would start to move ha better because you haven't lifted it, right? When you lift and you go into a position where from here, the club just basically moves up with zero rotation, yeah. that'll increase the amount of what you call radial yeah. deviation, yeah. which coupled with that is extension and lead wrist. Mm. Right? Yeah. Those two go together. It's a couple motion, right? So the more radial you add on the way back, you just maintain that radial on the way down, but the wrist's already in a cut position that it's like, I've got nowhere to go. Yeah. How do you want me to unload this? Yeah. So one of the things that we were just talking about and you saw from the video what Alex is trying to say there is that when I take that club away, when I get it to the top of my swing, my lower half is very static. Now, if I go back years ago when I was having lessons as a county player and things like that, back in those times, there was what they call the X factor. It was all about trying to keep the lower half steady, turn as much as you possibly can at the top, and that creates a big coil. Now, that big coil is kind of stuck with me over time. So what was happening is my lower half is getting very static and quiet, and then I was just not getting a full shoulder turn, which then meant that my arms were just collapsing to get to the top of the swing, which is putting it all out of sync, getting very armsy. And I've got to say, it felt armsy. My golf swing has felt armsy for a long, long time. I've tried to do things like trying to resist and trying to take my hands out of play, those sort of ideas, but just trying to get that club almost like artificially put to the top of my swing you know, it's, got, it's just got harder and harder to control. So Alex is trying to get me to get the sense of, which you'll see in the next clip, of just trying to feel like I can rotate my lower half, which will give me a full shoulder turn, not having to work my arms quite as much. And I've been really looking for what this position is at the top, where this left arm stays nice and straight, right leg really straightened up, hip opened up, full shoulder turn. That's the position I've been trying to, trying to or been trying to get for a long, long time. And, to get there, what I've been trying to do is just use my arms to get there. Well, that, as you can see from the video there, I don't need to do that. My arms just naturally fall into that position once I get my um, right leg opened up, my hip opened up, and allowing that full shoulder turn. So almost, I want you to feel, really good feel that I've used before in the past, right? Because your arms are gonna try and feel like you get this, your eyes looking at this ball yeah, before as you a, get to as impact. Okay, so post-impact, or pre-impact, you're trying to get your eyes out to that ball there. Good. There you go. But that is a prerequisite of making sure this happens in back -field. Yeah. That has to happen for you. Yeah. Good. So to kind of get a bit more of a, a bit of meat on the bone with what Alex is saying there, it comes down to a feel point of view for me. So what does it feel like to get myself to the top of the golf swing, opening my hips up, opening my shoulders up, stretching my arms to that position? Well, as I take that club away, what I'm getting the sense of doing is almost rising up with this right pocket position. So as I sort of get the sense, I feel like my right hip rises up and I get the sense of straightening my right leg as we come back. As a feel, I can, I can get the sense of it stretching the muscles up through here. So Alex was asking me in the lesson, you know, what does it feel? Do you feel it in your stomach? Do you feel it up the side? Where do you sense it? Well, I'm feeling it more up in this area here. So as I take the club away, I stretch that side up and that gives me that straight right leg, enabling my hip to open up. The other thing is once I get it to the top of the swing, instead of feeling like I'm hinging the club, so hinging back here, what I'm getting the sense is, is a wooden feel. So what I mean by that is that as I take the club away, I'm getting no real hinge. I'm just stretching my arms almost to the, to the right corner, the back right corner of the studio here. That gets me to the top, very little wrist hinge from there. It gives me a nice wide position with my arms, stretching out, not collapsing in from here. 
So those are the little feels that I'm getting on the takeaway position and putting me to the top of the swing. And then from there, all I'm gonna get the sense of doing is on the way down, is trying to get my peak of my hat to come through and look for the target as I come through. If you think about David Duval, you think about Annika Sorenstein and even Henrik Stenson now, if you watch what they do as they come into impact, they'll start to almost look for the target. Annika Sorenstein was a prime example of this. As she came in looking for the target, not falling back, just getting the sense of rotating, and getting the bill of that cap to really focus on target on the way through. So there are two pieces to this jigsaw puzzle that I wanna just mention. If I come and look down at the numbers here, my swing path always used to be around one degree into out, maybe pushing towards two degrees into out. Under pressure, that number starts to move maybe a little bit more into out. If I get a bit sort of stuck behind the ball, I start to move it out to sort of fours and maybe even fives, hitting big draws or pushes. Now, one of the things that Alex said to me at the time when we were sort of going through our session is that when we see that ball flight want to move around to the left hand side, which is what we're seeing there, my swing path on that position there was um, 1.8 degrees into out with a three degree closed club face to that path. Therefore, my ball's going to start kind of more down the middle to left and then go left from there. Now, that's because I'm working so hard on the takeaway position that I've kind of forgotten about what's happening on the way through. And what I do from there is, like I said, my, my tendency is to want to back up a little bit. My hands are still going to be slightly active. So what I'm going to focus on now, because I feel like I've got that takeaway position in a really good spot, is really zone in on turning hard through the shot. Remember what I said earlier, trying to turn that, the peak of my hat more towards the target. And hopefully we should start to see that ball flight just quieten down a little bit because my hands aren't going to be quite as active. So if you now look at that number, so that was a real sense for me to try and get the feeling of almost really, as I come through to almost look up, almost look for the ball. So I'm not almost like my right ear is more at the ball and, and I'm looking up here as I come through. That old cliche of keep your head down. Well, that's not the case, is it, as I'm coming through. That doesn't mean I don't stay in posture. People always say, oh, keep your head down because they want you to stay in posture. For me, I'm still maintaining my posture position, but I'm just rotating my head, allowing my body to just completely open up and quieten those hands down. If you look at the numbers that I've got here now, we've got a swing path of 0.5 degrees into out, so I'm still pretty much neutral and more into out. But my swing, my face position that time was 0.7 degrees open, which you can see there. My face is just a little bit open, pushing that ball down the right hand side. The other great number that I've been looking at is angle of attack is good, but my lie angle. So as I'm changing, I'm moving my height positions and things like that as I'm coming through the shot or getting a sense of that, my lie is 0.1 toe down. So that means that as I'm coming into impact, it's not changing my angle here as well, which is, which is good because then it enables me to be able to stay in the fitting that I had with my clubs. Lovely shot, that. That's good. That was a good shot. It just felt so good. 0.3 degrees into out, lie 0.3, club face 0.4. That's more like it, isn't it? So as you can see, first session in, it's gonna take me time. I've got a couple of things going on in my mind as to what I'm gonna be doing on the takeaway to then what I've gotta work on on the way down. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I'm trying to piece it all together. The great thing obviously with working with Alex is that he's very much an online coach, which you'll see through Instagram and tips and things like that. 
Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to focus on sending him videos, sending him my thoughts of how I've played, you know, what goes on in the mind of what I'm doing when I'm out on the golf course, which is obviously key as well. How do those swing changes feel? Is there any change that my body feels? Uh, these are all things that I think is important when you deal with a coach. You can also get involved with Alex if you're interested as well. I'm going to pop a little link down below. He's very online orientated, so if you're anywhere in the world, he can focus on giving you lessons online. He's got everything set up for that. So go and check him out for that as well. I will keep you all posted on how I get on, and obviously we will film my progress throughout this winter of playing golf and just see what happens with my numbers. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get a little bit of confidence back and move forward. Don't forget, if you are new to our channel and you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. A big thank you to Alex, and we'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.